In our last episode, we covered some reasons that you might want to use Django in your next web development project. In this episode, we're going to go over how to set up our development environment in such a way that you can basically create segregated projects that will allow you to install whatever third-party libraries you want without any worry of interfering with any of your other already created projects. So that might sound a little bit confusing, so let me just go into a little further explanation on what the problem is and what tools we'll be using to actually solve this problem. So I'm going to assume that you already have Python installed at the system level and that your next step is probably to install Django at the system level as well. Once you've done that, you create your first project and it relies on the system level Python as well as the libraries that you've installed in the system level site packages folder. This is perfectly fine, but let's assume also that a few months later you decide to create another Django project. This one too also depends on the system level Python and libraries that you've installed. Now in the months that occurred between project A and project B, we'll go ahead and assume that Django has updated itself to version 1.5 and that they have some great new features that you want to use in your new project. So you go ahead and update the system level version of Django to version 1.5. Now, a problem can occur when you go to run project A, now pointing to the new version of Django, and it no longer works. And that's because Django 1.5 has made some backwards incompatible changes that have affected your original project. This is not a good situation to be in. And what you really want to do is get rid of all the interrelated dependencies altogether. And once you've done that, why even bother having Django installed at the system level? Just keep it as clean as you possibly can. What you really want at the end of the day is for each of your projects to have its own independent Python executable, as well as set of libraries that it depends on so that there's no intermingling between projects. And the way that you're going to go about doing that is by using the tools Virtual ENV and Virtual ENV Wrapper, both of which we'll be covering how to use in today's lesson. So let's go ahead and get started by installing Virtual ENV. Now there are several different ways that you can do this. You can use easy install, you can use the pip installer, but if you're like me and you don't actually have either of these tools currently installed on your system, or if for some reason, let's say your system administrator doesn't actually allow you to have write access, another option that you have is to actually download the virtual env.py script, which is only a single file, and actually run it like you would any other typical Python script. So let's go with the latter option just so you can see how it works. So if we go ahead and go to the virtual env website, and just scroll down to the installation section. At the very last paragraph, you'll actually see a link to virtualenv.py. So click on that, copy the location, and jump over to your terminal. And I'm going to cd into my downloads directory, and I'm going to use wget to actually pull that file down. Shouldn't take more than a second or two. So just go ahead and run that. And once it's downloaded, you can call your Python executable with the virtual env.py script. And if you hit return, you should see a bunch of help information printed out to your screen. So this is one way to get around not having write access. This is a really helpful if you're on, say, a shared computer in school or if your system administrator, for whatever reason, doesn't allow you to install software on your system, then this is a way to actually still have access to virtual env. So this is nice. So let's go ahead and use this to, in, to create our very first uh, virtual environment. So we'll call this foog just because we need something to play around with. And what's going to happen is a new foo directory is created and inside of there the Python executable that you use to create the virtual environment will be copied. And what this means is that whenever you're running inside of a virtual environment you'll actually be using a separate Python executable from every other virtual environment on your system. In addition to that it's going to copy setup tools and install that and it's also going to install the pip installer. So now let's go ahead and cd into our foo directory. And at this point in time, we still are not actually in a virtual environment. In order to be in a virtual environment, we need to actually source the activate script that was created for us. And that's going to be found inside the bin directory. So if we do an ls, we see our bin directory here. And if we do an ls on bin, we actually see the activate script. And that's what we want to source. So let's go ahead and do that now. And once you do, you'll notice something different at the very beginning of your command line prompt. At this point in time, you actually have a set of parentheses and a name foo, and that's basically just going to tell you that you're currently in a virtual environment and what the name of that virtual environment is. So now if we try to run pip now, 
you'll actually see that it's being found, but I'm just not using it correctly. And if you'll remember, earlier I mentioned that I don't have pip installed on my current system. So just to prove this to you, I'm going to use another command that was created for us whenever we created our virtual environment, and that's the deactivate command. And of course, what this does is exactly the opposite of the activate command. It essentially tears down our current virtual environment and kicks us back out to the normal system. So if I run that now, you'll notice that the parentheses foo is gone from the beginning of the command line prompt, letting me know that I'm back into my normal system environment. So now if I type pip and hit return, you'll notice that it's telling me that the program pip is currently not installed. And what this tells us is that the virtual environment that we've created is not just a walled garden around the third party libraries that we've installed, but it also segregates the executables that we install that come with those third party libraries as well. So in this case, the pip installer that we have installed in our virtual environment is not accessible at the normal system level. And of course, will not uh, will also not be accessible by any other virtual environments that we create. So now that's an example of how we would use virtual ENV to create a virtual environment. But let's assume that you actually do have write privileges on your current system and that you don't want to actually run virtual ENV from the command line every single time as a separate Python script. Now, if that's the case, then what you want to do is actually install virtual ENV. So I'm just going to run through how to do that now if, like me, you actually don't have either of those installed on your system. So let's just take a look at how to do that real quick. I'm going to show you how to install both easy install and pip on your system. Pip is the successor to easy install. So typically you should prefer it whenever you're installing new software on your system or in your virtual environment. So let's go ahead and get that started now. Go ahead and go back over to your browser and you're going to navigate to the distribute website. You can find that by going to PyPy and typing distribute in the search field and then just following the links from there. So let's scroll down to the very bottom and you'll see a very short list of instructions to install pip. So basically what's going to happen here is you're going to download a setup script. You're going to run that, which will download and install distribute, which will have with it easy install. And then from there, you'll use easy install to install pip on your system. So let's go ahead and get that started by copying the URL for the setup script and then going back over to your terminal. And I'm going to use wget again and paste that in and go ahead and run that. It should take a second or two. And now you're going to run the setup script. But before we do that, remember that you are installing directly to the system at this point in time. And so you're probably going to need admin level uh, write access. So in order to do that, you'll have to run this command with the sudo command. So let's go ahead and type that in. So sudo python distribute underscore setup.py and hit enter and what that'll do is go out and it'll download the distribute tools and then they it will basically install that and like i said with that you'll actually get the easy install script and then from there again use sudo we can type easy install pip and that will go out and download pip and install to our system so now we should be able to hopefully run pip and uh, we actually have it we just haven't used it right so now Let's use this to install virtual ENV and we're going to go ahead and install virtual ENV wrapper as well. So type pip install virtual ENV and let's let that run. Should take a little bit longer than the others. And oops, it looks like, again, I totally forgot about this, but remember you're still at the system level at this point in time. So again, you'll have to actually use sudo because you need admin level access. So let's just bring that up again and we'll preface this with sudo and run it again. And now there we go, we installed virtual env properly. And let's do this again, sudo pip install. And this time it's going to be virtual env wrapper. So let that install again, should only take a little bit. And if you want to, you can actually skip the virtual env install and just do a pip install virtual env wrapper as that will also go and download virtual env and install it for you since it's pretty much a dependency. You can't have a wrapper without the actual thing it's wrapping. So hopefully that won't take too much longer. And it looks like it's just about finished. There we go. Now you should have virtual env from the command line without actually having to run the script directly or whatever. So now what we're going to do is take a look at virtual env wrapper and see what it offers us. Before we begin using virtual env wrapper, however, we have a little setup left to do. Specifically, we need to set up an environment variable that will tell virtual env wrapper where to keep all of our virtual environments. 
And then we need to source the virtual env wrapper shell script to make sure that all of the functions it provides are available to us whenever we start up a new shell session. To do that, we need to cd into our home directory and open up the startup file for whatever shell you're using. In my case, that's bash, so it's going to be my bashrc file. So I'm just going to go ahead and open that up now. And once you've got that opened, we're going to add a couple more lines to the bottom of it. The first will create a new variable called work on home, and we're going to set that equal to a folder in our home directory called dot virtual envs. So let's go ahead and do that now. So export work on underscore home equals, and we'll use the dollar home environment variable and doctor oops, virtual envs. There we go. Now we need to source the actual virtual env wrapper shell script so that all of the functions that it provides are in our shell whenever we create a new shell session. So let's go ahead and do that now. So if you're on Linux as I am, then it should just be in user local bin and it should be called virtual env wrapper.sh. However, if you're on the Mac and you've installed Python using Homebrew, you might actually find it's in a slightly different folder. You'll actually be looking for user local share Python, and then it'll still be called the same thing, virtual env wrapper.sh. So let's go ahead and save that and exit out now. And now we just need to source our startup file. So let's go ahead and do that to make sure that all the changes we just made are in the current shell. And whenever we do that, you're going to see a bunch of lines flash across the screen. And basically what's going on is the virtual env wrapper shell script that I spoke about is running. And the very first time it runs, it's going to go through and create the dot virtual envs folder that we specified as the work on home folder. So that's what you're seeing now. If you do it again, let's just go ahead and source it one more time so you can see uh, nothing actually prints out this time. So the folder is already created and everything's already taken care of. So this should be the only time that you actually see all this output. So let's go ahead and clear this screen real quick. Now we're going to go ahead and create a new virtual environment using a command that the virtual env wrapper provides to us called make virtual env. So let's go ahead and call that now to create the virtual environment that we'll use during the entire development of our Hacker News clone. So let's go ahead and call that now, make virtual env, and we'll call our environment Hacker News and hit return. And you can see it's doing some of the same things that we saw before whenever we were running virtual env by itself. It's copying the Python executable and it's creating the actual Hacker News uh, environment. And it's installing setup tools and pip and so on and so forth. Um, the one thing you will notice is that it's doing it in a different place than it has before. You see it in, the, in my home directory under the dot virtual envs folder. And it's because virtual env wrapper actually manages all of this for you. You no longer have to worry about where the folder is, where your virtual environment is. You're not going to CD into it anymore and call source on the activate. Instead, you're basically just going to switch back and forth between them without, uh, with another command called work on, which we'll see in just a second. But first notice that um, at the very beginning of our command line prompt, we have the, the same thing that we saw before, which is basically the parentheses with hacker news in it. It's telling us that we're already inside of our virtual environment. And that's because whenever you call make virtual env, it will create the environment and it'll go ahead and activate it for you. So let's just deactivate that now so we can see how we can switch back and forth. So now we're no longer in our virtual environment. If I call the work on command and I give it the name of the environment that we have, in this case, it's Hacker News and hit return, you notice we're back in it all of a sudden. So we didn't have to CD in the directory and do all the other stuff that we saw before. This is much easier switching around between your different virtual environments. So if we want to see all of the virtual environments that we have installed on our machine, we can call work on by itself and get a printout of everything, which for right now is just the Hacker News environment that we've just created. And that's going to bring us to the end of this episode. You now have your environment completely set up and ready to go. So join me in the next episode when we'll install Django and take it out for a quick spin. And one more thing before I sign off, and that's just to say that we've just scratched the surface of what all virtual env and virtual env wrapper can do. So if you found this episode interesting and would like to learn more about both of these tools, please check out my new series on NetTuts, where I'll be going over some of the tools available to Python developers. The very first episode in the series will be a much more in-depth look into the virtual env and its companion library virtual env wrapper. 
So hopefully I'll see you there, as well as the very next episode of our Django Fundamentals series.